Hello and welcome back to my Kubernetes series. In this video we will be installing an external load balancer. What does that mean? I have to emphasize external as we need something that will manage IP addresses, assign these to a service and make sure the service is reachable from the outside of the cluster. Let's say you run a web server. This web server should be accessible from the outside of your cluster. The load balancer provides that external IP address to the service, so traffic can make it to that particular deployment. This concept is explained on the Kubernetes website. If you have a service and you declare this service to be of type load balancer, an external IP address is assigned to this service. Of course, that is not done automatically if we scroll down on the page, we see how to set up the service as load balancer type. We also see how to expose the ports and how we find the external IP address assigned to your load balancer service. However, if we try to create a service of load balancer type in our cluster right now, we will only see a pending status in the column for external IP. Let's demonstrate that quickly. Heading over to the terminal, I have a simple deployment which I want to bring up. The deployment we're going to take a look at is the Nginx YAML. So let's go Vim Nginx YAML. This is the deployment which we're going to install in our cluster. Let's walk through this deployment. We have a deployment called Nginx main, one replica. We have a selector and labels that we're declaring. We have the template with its metadata, a label, Nginx main as well. And we have a container, which is an Nginx container that we're pulling from the container registry. A second piece in this YAML file, we have a service and that service is called Nginx Deploy Main. It's in the default main space, which is the same namespace as the deployment up here. And we have a selector with which we're referring back to this deployment up here. We have a port declared, it's a TCP port on port 80. That's all that there is. And as you can see, this is not of type load balancer right now. However, let's deploy this chart and continue from there. So we're going to quit. We're going to say kubectl apply-f nginx yaml. Then we're going to take a look at kubectl get all. As you can see, the container is already running and we also have a service. You can also clearly see that there is currently no external IP address assigned to the service. You will only obtain this external IP address by declaring the service a load balancer. So let's do this right now. Change the service to a uh, load balancer type and see what happens. So to do that, kubectl, edit, and we want the service slash nginx deploy. Nope, there's something in nginx deploy main. Now we're going all the way down to the type field, and we're going to change this field to load balancer. Please also make sure if you follow these steps that you spell it exactly this way as a camel case, uh, capital L, capital B, and the rest in small letters. Now let's write and quit. It was edited. Let's call our full deployment again and see what happens. So right now you see that this External IP is in a pending status. And you can call this however many times you like. This field will not change. The reason for that is we have no load balancer established in our cluster yet that can hand out 
external IP addresses. We will keep this deployment here and see what happens at the end of the video once we deployed our solution. Now let's head over to the Metal LB website and take a quick look at this load balancer of my choice. Under Concepts, this site perfectly describes what you need a load balancer for. I want to highlight two items. Number one, address allocation. In a Kubernetes cluster on a cloud provider, you request a load balancer and your cloud platform assigns an external IP address to that request. In a bare metal cluster, which is what we are considered, Metal LB is responsible for that allocation. And number two, the external announcement. Once the IP address is assigned to the load balancer service, Metal LB announces that this service is available in the Kubernetes cluster. We will see that during our deployment. Let's now head over to the installation page and find out what we have to do to install Metal LB. The first step we have to take to install Metal LB is to edit the config map cube proxy in the cube system namespace. And we have to set the mode to IPVS and the IPVS strict ARP to true. Let's now head over to the terminal and I split the screen again into two as in a previous video. On the left hand side I will enter the command, on the right hand side we will watch and see what happens to the impacted namespace or the deployment. On the right hand side as we're now editing the config map for QProxy, we will start watching the namespace kubectl get all dash n cube system and on the left hand side we will start editing the configuration map which is kubectl edit config map cube proxy oops, cube proxy dash n cube system and we are looking for IPVS. There is IPVS. And we are looking for strict ARP, which is currently false. And we want to change that to true. The second option was. mode, I want to set that to IPVS, mode IPVS, IPVS strict ARP true. Okay, those are the changes that are suggested by Metal LB. Now I will start write and quit. And on the right hand side, we will see if there are impacts. Assuming that those changes stuck, we will go back to the Metal LB website and look at the next step for the installation process. Switching back to the Metal LB website, we can now go down. There was also another option to use Z instead of editing the config map, which is another option. So now we get already to the installation process. You can install through the manifest by uh, entering uh, kubectl apply dash f and the address. But as you can imagine, we have an installation with customize, which I have not used, so I can't really speak to that. But we also find Helm. And that's my preferred installation method, so we will go with that method. Switching back to the terminals, let's add the repository to Helm and find the chart, download the values and install Metal LB. All right, the 
Helm repo add and the repository we're call, gonna call metal lb and the address for the repository is we're gonna copy and paste that enter metal lb already exists okay I forgot that I already added that in the preparation of this video then let us helm repo update okay metal lb is here and now let's search for the chart with helm repo search metal lb and we're going to do this search repo metal lb we find one chart which is the metal lb load balancer and i'm going to exit this folder here open up have a look here and we're going to mk dear 5 metal lb as we need to download the values file again 5 metal lb and now helm show values metal lb slash metal lb and we want to export that metal metal lb values dot yaml vim metal lb values yaml let's start right at the top and take a look at the name I'm not going to change that i'm going to hand that over during the installation process full name override load balancer class i want to change that load balancer class and i want to call it metal lb to make it simple want to change or not change rather the r back we want that to be created so we'll let the installation script take care of that by keeping it as true next we have a long section for prometheus which i'm not going to touch here so we're going to skip that all together all of the stuff that we're looking at right now is for prometheus for collecting data I don't want that so I'm going to skip it and go all the way to the controller we want that enabled because that is the metal LP controller so that is a is the crucial component the pull policy that's fine strategy rolling update service account we want that to be created and then service account name i want to choose that name myself i want to call this metal lb manager security context one is root is true uh, run as nobody run as non-root which is what we want so we're not running the service as, as root inside the container we're running it as the nobody user uh, we're not going to limit the resources node selector no priority class runtime all of that stays as is liveness probe yes we want to check that and make sure that it's running the readiness probe as well that looks good speaker yes we want that set up as well member list update strategy again service account yes and that is the metal lb speaker manager which means we have to go back up and change the controller name we could leave it as metal lb manager but we we'll rather set it to metal lb controller manager and now 
that we're back here, we're going to continue. Secret name. We do not have a secret that we want to implement. Again, liveness probes and readiness probes, starter probes, all good. And then last but not least, the FRR, which stood for the FR routing, which we're going to keep as is. Reloader resources, CRDs. We want the custom resource definitions to be created as well. And we are at the end of the file. At this point, we should be good. So we're going to write and quit. And we're going to switch back to the MetalLB website to make sure that we have fulfilled all our requirements. So we have downloaded the values file, which and we will be running this command in a second here. However, the speaker pod requires elevated permissions in order to perform its network functionalities. If you're using Metal LB with a Kubernetes version that enforces pod security, sorry, and we are running the version 128 in our cluster, so it will be enforced, the namespace Metal LB is deployed to must be labeled with the following labels. So, as we create the namespace for Metal LB, we need to make sure that there are the following three labels in there. The enforced is privileged, audit privileged, and warning privileged. If we would deploy the namespace without these labels, Metal LB could potentially not run properly and we would not be getting the benefits out of the load balancer as we expect. So we're going to switch back to the terminals and we're going to take a quick look at a file that I created in preparation for this video. This YAML file creates a namespace. The namespace will be called Metal LB System, and this namespace will contain the following three labels Pod Security, Kubernetes IO, and Force, Audit, and Warn, just as it was recommended on the Metal LB website. We are now going to deploy this namespace YAML file with kubectl apply-f namespace YAML kubectl get namespaces metal lb kubectl describe ns metal lb system we see that the three labels that we added are indeed in here, which is great. These were all the preparation steps that we needed to take in order to install Metal LB. Before we continue, however, I'm going to stop the watch on the right hand side of the screen and we're going to change to the Metal LB system in which we will currently not find any resources. That will change in a second as soon as we deploy Metal LB, which is our next step by entering Helm install Metal LB, which is the name for our installation, from the chart Metal LB, which is the repository name, and the chart Metal LB to the namespace metal lb system with the values file metal lb values yaml as soon as we hit enter we should on the right hand side start seeing some results from that command let's do that okay 
as we can see we have one two three four five speakers and one controller and we will let metal lb do its work or rather kubernetes do its work and start up our deployment after roughly about four minutes the metal lb speakers became ready as well they were started up and as you can now see we have a fully functional load balancer deployed to our cluster well fully functional might be a little exaggerated because we still have to complete and accomplish two steps as we have deployed our metal lb load balancer let's head back to the metal lb website and take another look at the remaining configuration. There are two steps remaining. Number one, we have to define an IP address range that Metal LB can manage and assign to services of the type load balancer. Number two, we have to let Metal LB announce those IP addresses that it manages. To do that, we will follow the layer two configuration model the first piece up here is the YAML that we're going to create and we're going to update our IP address range. And number two is we'll, we'll allow Metal LB to announce this IP address range within and outside of the cluster, within the cluster and outside it to my network. As we identified the configuration that we will apply to our cluster, let's head over to our router and identify the address range we can use. A word of caution. If you have a DHCP server set up in your network, you need to change your IP address range that you allow your router to hand out to devices on your network. Instead of your router managing the complete range from 1 to 254, this server is only managing everything from 1 to, for example, 230. That way, you have a few addresses that you can assign to your load balancer to manage. The image you see on your screen right now serves as an example. As every router and every DHCP server is different, you will have to take a look for the setting which allows you to change the dynamically allocated IP address range for your network. Once you identify that setting, take about 10 IP addresses off the top which we will allow Metal LB to manage. As we identified our address range, let's switch back to the terminal and create the IP address pool configuration that Metal LB will manage for us. IP address range.yaml. So we have the API version is Metal LB, the kind is an IP address pool, the name that I will give it is the IP range that Metal LB will manage. It's going to go into the Metal LB system's namespace and the address range is 230 to 240. Okay, that we'll write and quit and we'll deploy this IP range into our cluster. kubectl apply-f IP address range YAML. All right, Kubernetes does not like the name I gave the IP address range, so we're going to go back in and say I, IP, and range. That should do, and it does. All right, we have that deployed. kubectl get IP address pool 
dash n metal lb system we have one ip range in here and if we describe it and if you find the ip address pool weird this is a custom resource definition that was created by metal lb when we deployed it that's why you can actually deploy an ip address pool let's describe IP address pool IP range metal LB system you will see the IP address range is as we uh, defined it its auto assign is true as soon as a request comes in it will automatically take one of those IP addresses and assign it to this request Okay, emptying screen, continuing with the next file, which is the advertisement. We have to advertise, advertise.yaml, the level two advertisement for the IP address ranges. So I'm going to copy and paste what we've seen earlier on the website of Metal LB. Again, we have the Metal LB IO API version. We have an L2 advertisement and we're announcing the IP. This time we're not going to take any chances on capitals IP and write and quit. kubectl apply dash F advertise has been created and kubectl get l2 advertisement dash n metal lb system and here it is okay now that is complete we are going to switch over now and we're going to take another look at the previously deployed Nginx container at the beginning of the video. As you can see, the request for an IP is still pending. Once we deployed the Nginx container and its service and changed the services type to load balancer, we would expect that an IP address would be assigned. In theory, that would happen. However, the load balancer does not even know that it's being addressed. You remember that when we deployed and set up a load balancer class, we now have to also set that load balancer class up in the Nginx deployment. Unfortunately, kubectl edit service Nginx deploy main we cannot add this information to an existing deployment so if even if I'm adding the uh, load balancer class in here and call it metal LB I cannot save this information kubernetes does not allow me to add this information after the deployment was created. The only option we have is to remove the deployment, update the service with the missing information, and redeploy the engine X deployment. So let's quit and do that. We're going to kubectl delete dash F engine X we're removing it. We're now going to vim nginx yaml. We're going to add the two information that we want in here. The type, we're going to set the load, load balancer right away. And then we add the load balancer class metal l we're going to write and quit. And now to redeploy kubectl, the engine x apply dash f engine x. 
Camel. We're going to redeploy this chart and now you can see that the IP address was assigned to our service immediately and right away. So the important part here is that whenever you need a load balancer type, so an external IP address, you have to say, you have to declare the load balancer class with metal LB in our case, and then you will get an IP address assigned. If you deploy your metal LB without the load balancer class up here, you can also omit the load balancer class, but as we have declared one, you must also refer to that class in any of your deployments, otherwise you will never get an IP address assigned. All that's left to do for this video is to clean up the deployment as we will not need the Nginx application going forward, and to recap this video. What is working? On top of our two storage provisioners, we now have a load balancer which manages an IP address range and advertises these IP addresses in my network. What is left to do? We have a few steps in our infrastructure setup remaining, namely the setup of an ingress controller and the certificate manager. What is next? The ingress controller. Our ingress controller will allow us to route traffic for different subdomains or even fully qualified domains to different parts or services should you wish to do so. I will use the ingress controller to route traffic to different paths in my cluster to be able to access these services. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.